Hi everyone, um, welcome to Earth Day 365's Green Your Home series. Um, today, Perennial is teaching us how to make unpaper towels and reusable disinfectant wipes, which I'm excited about. So thank you so much for being here. Awesome. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, so my name is Tara and I am the program director at Perennial. For those of you folks that may not have heard of Perennial before, we are a nonprofit. We're located in South City, St. Louis. And in our space here on South Broadway, um, we have classes and workshops where we show folks how to make stuff with reclaimed materials. So our focus is on sustainability and diverting waste from landfill while teaching those DIY skills. So um, I think what we're showing here today um, is very relevant to what we're all interested in learning right now and ties very deeply into Perennial's mission. Uh, in addition to the classes and workshops that we have here in person, we've been doing some virtual workshops like this one over the past couple months. You'll see a mixture on our website of virtual and in-person workshops. And we also have an outreach branch where we partner with social service agencies in the city that serve women in transition. Um, we have retail here in our shop. So kind of behind me, you'll see I'm in front of our retail area at the front of our shop. So we make and sell DIY kits and tools. Um, and then we sell upcycled art supplies as well. Um, most of that is by the pound or has special pricing. So it's very, very affordable. And we have uh, an open studio time four times a month called Community Workshop. And that's a time where folks can come into our space um, and use our tools and supplies to work on their own projects. So maybe if you wanna get started on some project but don't necessarily have the supplies or space at home, um, we allow you guys to come in and use our space for those purposes. We have a, a fun event coming up on Friday called the Antisocial Ice Cream Social. Um, I think we're, we're almost at capacity for that event, but um, you can head to our website, perennialstl.org. I'll type that in the chat so you guys can see it because perennial is honestly kind of a hard word to spell if you're not used to spelling it. It's two N's, one R. Um, so that's our website there in the chat. Um, feel free to head there and kind of check out what we're doing. All right, so you guys are all here today to learn about uh, making some unpaper towels and disinfectant wipes. Hopefully by the end of this, you guys will say, wow, that was way easier than I thought it was going to be, because it really is. Um, I think it really doesn't need to be complicated, um, either making your own disinfectant um, or making your own napkins. It, it can really be very simple. Um, so if you don't have a sewing machine, don't even worry about that because I'm gonna show you really easy ways to um, make some towels that you don't need a sewing machine at all. So um, I kind of have my little jar of wet wipes sitting here that are soaking in some disinfectant. First, I'd like to show you kind of what fabrics you might wanna use for either your unpaper towels or for your disinfectant wipes, um, what you can use that's already in your home. And then we'll kind of go into making your own disinfectant and cleaners a little bit later on. And I know, and um, uh, maybe the Earthways folks will tell you about this too. I know that they're doing another programming next week, I believe, with some cleaning, um, some other methods of cleaning. So hopefully you guys will get to tune into that too. All right. So I have in front of me um, just, this is just an old pillowcase. So really, when you're making your own either cleaning rags or unpaper towels, um, I always recommend that instead of rushing out and buying fabric because so many places are um, out of fabric right now or they're really busy with everyone buying fabric to make masks, um, look at what's already in your house. Textiles compose a huge percentage of our landfill waste. So before you decide that something is not usable, like an old t-shirt, an old bed sheet, an old pillowcase, take a look at it and see, can I downcycle it and use it for something in my home as a rag for cleaning that it really doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter if it has a couple of holes, tears or stains in it. Um, this is really a great purpose. So a couple things I grabbed, I grabbed, um, this is a cotton flannel pillowcase. You can kind of see that nice flannelly texture. This is one of my favorite 
um, supplies to use as a rag because it's still really thin and flexible, but it does have a little bit of a texture to it. So it, if you're cleaning a surface, it does have a little bit of a grip to it. Um, so that cotton flannel is something that I really, really love to use. Of course, if you just have like an old towel in your home, cutting these down is also a great solution, especially again, one that's really kind of old battered, you're not using it on your body anymore. Um, this is a great way to repurpose it. I also have an old sheet. Uh, sheets are perfect for this. Typically they are cotton or some sort of cotton blend, um, which is great. Sheets are gonna be a little bit thinner than the other two materials. So you're gonna have some variety and thicknesses and I recommend kind of experimenting and seeing what you like. Again, what I said is that I tend to prefer this cotton flannel because it's kind of an in-between. Um, with the really thin bed sheet material, especially if you're making like a jar of disinfecting wipes, you can really fit a lot in there, but they are thinner. So you do kind of have to fold them up if you're using them or make them a little bit bigger. Um, the other thing I'm realizing, I forgot to grab on my table, but it's okay, is a t-shirt. Um, cutting up a t-shirt and turning it into rags is a great way to reuse it once you're done with it. Um, we turn t-shirt into t-shirt yarn here and we use that yarn for macrame and crochet and knitting. But when you do that, you really just use like the torso of the t-shirt, kind of the trunk of it. Um, the whole top part we turn into rags and we've been using those rags like crazy to disinfect our space. So it's great. Um, and if you guys at any moment uh, have any questions and you want to chime in, uh, I'm watching the chat. Um, so feel, feel free to kind of chime in if you have any thoughts or questions throughout and I'll do my best to address those. All right, so for those folks that might not have a sewing machine or something at home, I'm gonna go ahead and lay my fabric out on my table and show you a couple of different things that we could do to get it prepared. The very easiest thing we can do, and I'm gonna show you with this cotton sheet because it's gonna be really, really easy to do this with a cotton sheet. Um, this is an easy technique called snip and rip. That's the way I like to refer it, refer to it as at least. Um, so the way that textile fabrics are, are made, they have a weave to them that goes in two different directions typically in a woven fabric. Uh, so whenever you um, rip it, it's going to go very nicely along the weave that is already present in that fabric. So it rips very nicely. So say I want to make something that's an eight inch square, which I tend to, with my disinfecting wipes, make them about eight inch squares. On paper towels, you may wanna go a little bit larger. Um, I tend to use 16 inch squares for my napkins and on paper towels. Uh, all right, so what I can do is just take a pair of scissors. I've got my edge of my fabric here. I've got one corner of it. I'm gonna measure on my um, cutting mat that's on my table. If you don't have a cutting mat, don't worry, you don't need it. This is about my eight inch spot. All I'm gonna do is take my scissors and make a tiny little snip there. And now I can pull these apart and rip them. I didn't make my snip big enough. Let me make my snip a little bit bigger. So once I get that snip going, I can just tug and my fabric rips right apart. And now I can do that in this direction as well, or I can rip all the way down to the other end of my bed sheet. Easy peasy. And now I've got one piece that's nice and long and it's that same eight inches that I want all the way across. So now I can go back and cross rip it. So I'll make another snip. I'll measure eight inches again. Make another snip and this time I'll make it big enough. I didn't make it big enough so that my fingers could actually grip on both sides. But I'll go ahead and rip that across. I've got one sheet. Measure again. Got another sheet, ripping down. Oops, again, I didn't make that a little big enough. I'm gonna go down probably about an inch or so in order to be able to get a nice grip on that. Now, what does happen whenever you do snip and rip? 
is it's gonna bunch up often if a thread gets tugged. Don't worry, it can unbunch really super easy. It is going to have a little bit more of an unfinished look, a little bit of a frayed edge. But again, if you're using these as cleaning rags, it's not a big deal. It's really not a huge deal at all. And it's very, very easy to rip down a lot of these at once. So if you've been intimidated by doing this kind of project because you don't know how to sew, you don't have a sewing machine, um, but you do want to reduce the waste in your home, this is a method for you because you're going to be able to get a lot of rags really quickly and rip them down with no, with no problem at all. If you want a little bit more of a finished look, you could also use pinking shears. And I'm going to show you how to do that. These are basically like little zigzag scissors. Those also come in rotary cutter form. So this is a rotary cutter. I didn't grab my pinking rotary cutter, but it would have a little bit of a zigzag blade on this. All right, I'm gonna go down and show you my cotton flannel I have here on my table. Pull that back towards me a little bit. And if I'm using pinking shears, I like to start with a template. So I've got a little eight by eight inch, just piece of, what is this? This is like a cereal box that I cut down. Um, and I like to just trace it with chalk because you're not gonna do the snip and rip method I like to just make sure I can get as nice of a square as possible. I just grab, this is just a normal piece of like school chalk that I grabbed here. Use it to write on the fabric because it'll brush off really easily. If you don't have chalk in your house, you can certainly use something like a marker. Just be sure to stay on the inside of that line. The chalk is nice because it's just gonna brush right off. I'm gonna turn this so I can cut it a little bit easier. Make sure you guys can still see that. And since this is a pillowcase, you can kind of see my blue line. Since this is a pillowcase, I'm cutting through two layers at once because um, I didn't unfold it or uncut it. But you can, if you have uh, more dull scissors, you can cut through just one layer at a time. So I'm just going to use my pinking shears to go just on the inside of that chalk line or kind of stay right on the chalk line. I like to keep my strokes as long as possible. And you can take the time to line up the zigzag that you just cut with the one before it. I usually don't, again, especially if I'm making rags. Not a huge deal how they look. Got two sides done here. I might just leave the one that's down here on the edge from what I cut previously. So a pinking shear is gonna give you this nice zigzag edge. And the point of a pinking shear, the point of this edge is to reduce fraying. So um, when you put this through the wash, because that zigzag tends to hold those fibers in place, that's gonna get a little bit less fraying. With the snip and rip, it is going to have a little bit more fraying, but eventually, like after the first couple washes, it really doesn't fray down much more, unless it's a really, really battered piece of fabric that you're using, which again, Keep using it until it's at its end of life and then decide whenever you want to throw in the towel on that fabric. So easy peasy, right? Hopefully you guys aren't too intimidated by these because very, very simple methods we can do here. All right, if you're wanting to turn these into unpaper towels, I don't know if you guys have like a paper towel roll at home and you're and you use these really regularly. Um, I didn't have a freestanding paper towel roll here, so I just grabbed an empty paper towel tube and a dowel that I'm going to kind of mimic what, what we would do. What I actually like to do for unpaper towels, if you don't want to make your own, I tend to use these um, just vintage napkins that are already sewn up. And again, these are about 16 inches square. You could make these a little bit smaller. Um, it looks like our paper towel tube is about 11 inches long. So maybe making something like 10 inches square would fit perfectly. Whenever I use uh, normal napkins like this 16 inch square, which is kind of a standard for what you're gonna find in a store or a vintage, whenever I find these, um, I fold them up before fitting them onto my paper towel tube. And I'll show you how to do that. So here at Perennial, we honestly, we just keep ours in a basket. We just have a bunch of, it's a mixture of vintage napkins and then pieces of fabric that we've ripped down. We just keep them on a, in a basket in our kitchen. 
um, on our shelf. And then right below it, we keep a, a waste basket. So those are the ones that need to be washed. So you wanna set yourself up a system at your home so that it makes it really easy for you to use. If you're used to using paper towels and throwing it in the garbage and you have a fabric rag that you wanna keep reusing, but you don't have anywhere to put it when you're done, maybe your laundry room isn't close, again, get yourself a system. So we just use a little wooden wicker woven basket right underneath ours to keep ours in shape. All right, so what I wanna do in order to make this really nice and usable. And again, these are mostly cotton fabrics, cotton flannels. I start with my big, this one's 16 inches square. I'm just gonna fold it in half in one direction. And that's all I need to do is fold it in half in one direction. I'm gonna do that for all of them. Just kind of stack them on top of each other. What I'm gonna show you here is how to wind these onto your paper towel tube to make these easy to use. If you're really kind of committed to reducing waste, going zero waste in your home, setting up systems that make it easy for you is going to be of the utmost importance. So I've just got a stack of a bunch of napkins here and I'm gonna take an empty paper towel tube, I'm gonna center it and I'm just gonna roll from one direction so Grabbing that fabric, rolling all the way to the other side. Now I've got the part that, um, where the last napkin ended here. I'm gonna just put that down so that I've got my edge coming up on the other side, kind of sealing that in. And this can be pretty quick. We've got a couple minutes to take time to do this every week. It's gonna dr dramatically reduce your waste. We don't see any questions yet, but again, feel free to chime in if you guys are having any lingering thoughts or questions. So what's really great about these cotton fabrics is they do actually tend to cling to each other pretty nicely. So let's kind of do a little demonstration about if I had either a freestanding paper towel holder or one that's mounted to your wall, I can pull one off and this tends to stay in place. So if that was a worry for you, um, with, these, with the right fabric, with a cotton or cotton blend fabric, it's not going to be an issue. You see, it really just kind of sticks to itself really nicely. It's like magic. And once you use those, again, having some sort of basket in your kitchen to be able to wash them is really going to make it easy peasy for you. Someone says in the chat, the only thing I use paper towels for is to sop up grease, bacon, pizza, etc. Any suggestions on what I can use instead? Seems like the cloth would get gross and hard to clean. Yeah, so what I tend to do with those, um, honestly, what I will say about trying to go zero waste is it's okay if you can't fully commit to that. If you still need some paper towels or paper towel products, um, then it's okay to have a designated collection of those for things like grease. Um, also what you can do is if you have really, really nasty rags that are end of life, old t-shirts, save those separately as your grease rags. I have seen folks on zero waste platforms recommend things like using an old newspaper to sop up grease. Um, I don't know, to me that's like a little bit weird or kind of gross. Um, but it's certainly an option. Um, I like that you're thinking about that because again, you do wanna make this as easy and functional for you as possible. Um, in my own home, I definitely still have paper towels for grease and I, um, oh, um, Missouri Sewer and Trash Department, uh, our MSD, sorry, Missouri Sewer Department, they, um, give away little lids for soup cans for storing your grease as well. So I also get as much grease as I can out um, into a soup can, pop that lid on it and store that in my refrigerator until it's hard. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean. Sometimes it helps to just have paper towels. Um, but either keeping those separate and having fabric that is really just end of life fabric or um, just doing a blend of paper and fabric is a-okay. 
It's a great question. Um, all right, so whenever you're ready to create your own disinfectant wipes, what I recommend is finding some sort of big jar. Um, so I recommend something like a pickle jar or maybe even something a little bit larger. This one is pretty medium sized. We certainly do have some bigger jars here, but this one's kind of um, in between. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use a solution of alcohol as our cleaning, as our disinfecting solution. And then you can kind of um, pump that up and make it a little bit better, a little bit more antibacterial, a little bit better smelling by adding some specific types of essential oils. So when looking for a disinfectant, you're going to want uh, either an isopropyl alcohol solution that's at least 70%. It can be higher, um, but and I'm going to link you guys to the CDC website with guidelines on this too, um, because we definitely are considering the CDC guideline. Okay, I had that pulled up, so that's linked in the chat. Um, obviously, coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, at least is specifically, it's a, it's a little bit newer for us, so we're still learning about it. But as of right now, what the CDC is recommending is a 70% alcohol solution. So again, at least this one that says 70% on the bottle. If you find one that is a little bit higher than that, um, you can dilute it down a little bit with water to make it go further. Um, but you're looking for that number. You can also uh, use vodka as well. You just wanna look at the proof and make sure that the proof is right. So since we're looking for that 70% solution, you're gonna need at least 140, 150 proof on your alcohol to make it 70%. Um, local uh, places like Four Hands sells big jugs of sanitizer that I believe is probably like their waste alcohol. Um, so if you wanna support local businesses and get some of that in bulk, um, that's a great place to do it. That's what we've been using here in our shop as our sanitizer solution. All right, so um, the ratio you want to do for your cleaning solution, for every cup of alcohol that you're going to put into your jar, you're going to want about 10 to 15 drops of some kind of essential oil. Um, this helps to offset the really strong smell that alcohol can have because honestly, it's not always the most pleasant smell, but it's going to do the job. And not only does that essential oil help offset the smell, but specific types of essential oils also have their own antibacterial properties to them. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple that do. Lavender essential oil is one that does. Peppermint is one that does tea tree oil, eucalyptus. I don't have cinnamon here, but cinnamon is also very effective. I'm also gonna type those into the chat so you guys have them handy in case you're shopping. Um, maybe you already have these in your home, maybe you don't. What else do I need? Peppermint and lavender. I think there's a couple more that do, but those are the ones that I know to be um, antibacterial in their properties. So all that we're going to do for this is just for every cup of isopropyl alcohol or vodka or whatever alcohol solution we're using, we're going to do 10 to 15 drops. So I'm going to add in a cup here. To my solution here. And then maybe you happen to have one. I've been using the tea tree oil in mine here. Oh no, I'm sorry. I was using, I was using eucalyptus, wasn't I? Which one was I using? I'll find out because I pulled the stopper off of it. There it is. It was the tea tree oil that I was using. Um, if you don't have one that has like a little dripper on top, I do have like a little eyedropper. Um, this helps just to preserve you know, if you don't want to go super heavy handed with essential oils because they can be pretty expensive. I'll just go ahead and add those in. Let's 
swirl that around a little bit. I'll give it a little bit of a shake and a stir. I missed how much water you added first is a question in the chat. No water at all. I just happened to have um, some alcohol already in here. Um, I had a 70% alcohol solution, so I didn't add water to dilute it at all. But if you have something, um, there's some that's like a 90% or maybe it's a little bit more 95%, um, then you would dilute that down. Um, I don't know off the top of my head how much you would dilute that down. Maybe I can get that number for you by the end of this. We'll see. Um, but I just tend to get that 70%. Um, all right, so I'm going to shake that up. On some of those rags that I just cut down, I'll go ahead and toss in here so they can soak some up. Whenever you're ready to use these, storing in a glass jar um, is, a great, is a great idea because that alcohol is going to be very safely contained within this. Alcohol is flammable, so um, don't store this in some place where it's potentially going to spark a flame. You can also reuse some of your containers. So like if you've been using disposable Clorox wipes or something, um, reusing those could be a good solution as well. I tend to prefer glass because a lot of plastics that um, we purchase are single use plastics. Um, and I always worry about the, the longevity of those. If some of those plastic particles will eventually break down and seep into um, whatever you're using in it, um, if it's used beyond its expected lifetime. So um, that's why I tend to prefer glass. Um, alcohol is, it's fine to use on your hands, but it does have the um, quality of drying out your hands. So if you want to use gloves whenever you pull these out, that's A-OK. -okay. Um, we've been using a lot of the sanitizer on our hands, so kind of used to just having a little bit of dry hands and then moisturizing a lot. So I just give those a squeeze when I pull them out until they're not uh, until they're not dripping anymore. And then I can just use it as a disinfectant on whatever surface I'm working on. You'll want to um, be careful in case you have some very fragile surface in your home. Um, I believe that this is safe to use on like granite countertops, for example, whereas something like vinegar is not. Um, but always do a test in an inconspicuous area if possible, or if you have some strange material at countertop, um, do a quick Google search and see, does alcohol damage this? I believe it is safe to use on granite though. If you're not looking for a disinfecting solution, if you're just looking for a cleaning solution, um, one that I love to use is just a simple 50-50 mix of vinegar and water. You can do the same process of snip and rip or uh, cutting with pinking shears down some um, reusable towels and then, um, and then soaking them in a vinegar water solution. If you want to pizzazz up your jar, I added a cute little label. This is just a scrap of brown paper bag from groceries. Had some fancy scrapbooking scissors to get a little bit of a cute decoration. Kind of makes it fun, makes it seem like we're not all trying to defeat a deadly virus. We can make this a little bit cute, make it fun. Well, that's really all there is to show you guys, unless you have any more thoughts or questions. Um, Again, I'll write that in the chat. 70% alcohol solution is what we're looking for. I linked you to that um, CDC guideline. Um, you did have a question on Facebook. Someone asked where Forehand sells their sanitizer, um, if it's right at the brewery or somewhere else. Do you know? Yeah. Um, admittedly, I haven't been the one to purchase it for perennial here, but I believe it's just right there at their brewery, um, which is down the street from us, um, kind of down Broadway. Mm. Cool. Um, again, yeah, feel free for people to um, unmute yourself or type in the chat if you have any questions, um, which the if you're unfamiliar with Zoom, the chat button is down at the bottom as well as your mute and camera buttons if you move your mouse.
Oh, someone um, asked what glue do you use to apply the label to glass, rubber, cement? Mm -hmm. um, this is actually just a double-sided tape. Um, we use this. I know double-sided tape is not like the most eco-friendly thing, but it, it stands up the test of time. You can use, we, we certainly do use Elmer's glue all um, a lot on glass. It's actually really strong. We've made mosaic gluing glass to glass with glue all. Um, rubber cement, I haven't used in like probably like 15 years, so I, I can't, <laughs> can't speak to how it works on glass specifically, but um, glue, Elmer's glue all or just a double-sided tape works great. That's a good question. Um, so while we're waiting for any last minute questions, um, next Tuesday, July 28th at 10 a.m., um, Green Jean Ponzi is presenting Smarter, Greener, Cleaner, um, which is green savvy home cleaning in the age of COVID-19, um, which will cover why cleaning and disinfecting are different, um, but both important, as well as um, what products clean safely as well as effectively. Um, and there'll also be some more DIY cleaners for you, um, which includes uh, resources for home and school, avoiding greenwashing um, and personal care. So again, that's Jean Ponzi from the Earthway Center um, at the Missouri Botanical Garden next Tuesday, the 28th at 10 a.m. So you can go to our website at earthday-365.org um, and at the top, if you click virtual programs, um, that page has all of the virtual programs that we've done so far. So you can click around there and see what we've got for you. Um, but then this one will, is virtual Green Your Home series um, to get on that link to the Zoom or watch it on Facebook. Um, and on that page as well, we're adding some other zero waste um, and Green Your Home resources. Uh, uh, sporadically so you can keep that page handy um you've got yeah, a you lot of thank yous <laughs> you got a lot of you got a lot of thank yous oh, yeah. thanks, thanks, thanks uh, everyone for joining us i appreciate it hopefully yeah. again, this was easier than you thought it would be that's always my hope um and that you guys you know really realize the importance of being resourceful i think we're all kind of realizing um as it's been hard to shop and we've been told to stay at home how important it is to be resourceful. And this has always been part of Perennial's mission. And I'm glad that it's really proving to be relevant right now and that we can share those skills with you guys. For sure. Thank you so much, Tara. Thanks all for joining us. All right, thanks guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.